Wow, JP Morgan coming at you with their own crypto ETF-like investment. Crazy. Here's the thing, there's roughly $5.8 trillion inside of the ETF space, which is about six times the size of Bitcoin's entire market cap. But the thing about Bitcoin is that it's scary. It's volatile, it can be lost, it can be stolen. And one of the ways around that to be able to put your money into crypto without actually owning it directly is to put your money inside of what's called an ETF or an exchange traded fund, which is sort of like a basket, or in this case, a deck of playing cards, because I'm a nerd, that you can think of each and every one of these playing cards as sort of like a stock or an asset that goes inside of this little box. That's how you can kind of think about it. Now, Canada actually has their own crypto ETF that they just recently released. But here in the US, our Congress is like, no, not gonna get it. That's because it doesn't have enough liquidity, there's too much price manipulation, and that it's just too volatile. So we're told no. Along comes JP Morgan Bank with their new crypto investment to save the day. So in this video, I wanna talk about exactly what it is, what's inside of it, and if it's worth your money. So let's talk about it. Speaking of market manipulation, imagine each and every one of these little rotating packets of cards as an asset that represents a stock that goes inside this box, which represents an ETF. It's so confusing. You toss everything in the air for one last chance, balanced at the edge of a knife hoping for good results. Let's see how we did. Everything starts to make sense because everything is exactly as it should be, perfectly in order, which also means that this was the worst video intro ever. I promise this next part will make more sense. <laughs> Let's begin. Hi, my name is Andre Jake. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the nerdistry. So let's talk about this JP Morgan crypto ETF. Now, I say that in air quotes because the truth is it's not an ETF as much as it's a basket of fintech companies that have heavy exposure to the crypto space. Now, JP Morgan is hoping that it can entice mom and dad, grandpa, grandma to get into the crypto space without actually owning any crypto directly because this way they can skip the entire complex process of learning what the heck this crypto thing is, how to sign up to Coinbase or Gemini, BlockFi, take it offline, you know, cold storage, all that stuff is really complicated for a lot of people. So this is kind of their solution to that problem, but it is very complicated. So let me just share with you what this thing is because I did a ton of research of all the assets that are within it and all the nuances surrounding it and I'll give you my thoughts but let me just first share with you all of the assets that are within because it's 100% stock based and here are the stocks so MicroStrategy, Square, Riot, Nvidia, PayPal, AMD, TSM, ICE, CME, Overstock and Silvergate. So a good list of companies, but there's a few things I like about it, but there are far more things <laughs> that I absolutely hate about this investment. So let me share with you that now. This is not a traditional ETF-like structure. This is what's called a note, AKA a promise or a derivative from JP Morgan that tells us that they will pay us the profits of 11 companies that have heavy exposure to the crypto space minus their fees within a specified time frame. So that's what it is, but it doesn't actually tell us in the document how long this time frame is. All it tells us is that it's not going to be a short term instrument. In other words, they wanna discourage people from day trading this because they think it's going to be a very volatile investment that's gonna go up and down in value a lot. But here's the difference. Unlike a traditional ETF for an individual stock or even Bitcoin, when you buy this note, you have to buy it in multiples of $1,000. So one note equals $1,000. And then when you buy it, you lock in that price, whatever it is at the time of buying it, you wait for the profits and the losses to calculate. And then at the end with the expiration date, you finally get the money minus their fees. And the exact formula that they use to calculate this is $1,000 multiplied by one plus basket returns minus basket deductions, which I know sounds really, really complicated, but it's just super easy. It's profits minus losses minus their fees. That's all it really is. But there's a lot of problems with this investment that I don't like, and here's what they are. For starters, I have a huge problem with the fees. I love everything to be free, but this has a management fee of 1.5%, which is huge. You know how you know that's way too much? Because that's more than 1.21 gigawatts. You know how Doc Brown reacted to that. Inflation is real. <laughs> Jokes aside though, this is crazy because I have no idea why they are charging that much money. If you think about it, 
they are not having custody over cryptocurrency. These are stocks we're talking about. If they held cryptos, that has some inherent risk to it. So I can see why it's justified to pay them 1.5%. But in this case, this is just a bunch of stocks. If you owned 100 notes of this, aka $100,000, you would be paying them $1,500 just for free, for doing nothing essentially. In fact, ARK Invest by Kathy Wood, that has an arguable good amount of exposure to Bitcoin already, and it has the same amount of stocks, 10 versus 11, and she charges 0.75% yearly management fee, which is literally half the price of this one. And I trust Kathy Wood to do her due diligence way more than I trust Jamie Dimon, and by extension, JP Morgan. I know that sounds really harsh, but let me remind you, this is the same guy that said that people that buy Bitcoin are stupid, that Bitcoin is a fraud, and someday, people will pay the price. This is the CEO of JP Morgan we're talking about here. And either he's taking advantage of his customers knowingly, or he thinks his customers are just too naive to tell the difference between owning a derivative and owning the real thing while charging them insane amounts of fees. But either way, not a good look because he's never taken back anything he said. He's never apologized for his words. And so I'm not gonna pull back anything and I'm gonna tell you everything. So another thing that this SEC document says that I found egregious <laughs> is this. So he says, it is possible that hedging or trading activities of ours or our affiliates in connection with the notes could result in substantial returns for us or our affiliates while the value of the notes declines. Basically, he's saying that there could be a potential conflict of interest in the way that they trade because they could make money for themselves and their friends while the value of your investment could be going down. If that's not a red flag, then I don't know what is, but this is a perfect example of the kind of conflicts of interest that still exist in the finance space on Wall Street that I'm not sure why are still allowed to exist in the first place. For a guy that was so against Bitcoin for so many years, someone that said that he would fire any employee that he caught trading Bitcoin, why would anyone in their right mind trust him to make moral, due diligent, and forward-thinking decisions about a product that he doesn't believe in? Hey, you wanna buy my product? I don't know, is it any good? No, I hate it, it's dumb. You're stupid if you buy it. Shut up and take my money, sold. Now, luckily, the saving grace of this note is that it does have good companies in it. In fact, I mentioned some of them in my best blockchain stocks video. So some of those stocks from that video made it inside of JP Morgan's crypto ETF like product, which is, I guess, kind of cool and validating. But the truth is you could recreate this entire product yourself for free and you can manage it yourself for free. And all you need to do is use the link down below to deposit $100 with Webull, go get those two free stonks, each of which can be valued up to $1,850. And once you have $1,000 to invest, here's what you put it into. Put $200 into MicroStrategy, $180 into Square, another $150 into Riot, $150 again into Nvidia, $100 into PayPal, $50 into AMD, 50 into TSM, $40 into ICE, 40 again into CME, $20 into Overstock, and another $20 into Silvergate. And boom, there goes your $1,000. You just recreated their entire ETF for free. You're welcome. Jamie Dimon has never been an ally of crypto and specifically Bitcoin. And I would not want to be his customer when he potentially loses my money and then calls me dumb for trusting him. But that's just what happens when you call people out and call an entire asset class as as dumb and then try to turn it into a profitable product. People remember that kind of stuff and then they make YouTube videos about it. And uh, <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, I'm really passionate about this stuff because I just hate how corporations think that they can sometimes get away with doing things like this. But that's just the first issue I have. There's a few others that are arguably even worse. Secondly, you're not fundamentally exposed to Bitcoin's performance or the crypto space as much as you are to the top five companies in that note. That's because almost 80% of the entire note's performance is tied to the top five positions, which, okay, not a huge deal, but it's like if I create my own ETF and there's a thousand companies in it, except one of them has like 90% of the money and the other 999 get to divide that 
left over 10%. And I'm like, management fee tree fitty. <laughs> it's like, what? You're managing like five stocks. Why is the management fee so high? Now I know that might not matter as much to people when they're making money from this note because yeah, some of these companies are great and maybe you can make money. But the thing they miss is any potential future dividends from any of these companies by holding this derivative note rather than the actual stocks themselves. Literally from their document, it says, you will not receive dividends on any reference stock but it doesn't even end there. It says investors should be willing to forego interest and dividend payments and if the basket is flat, declines, or does not increase by at least 1.5%, be willing to lose some or all of their principal amount at maturity, AKA at the end of the expiration date, if our note didn't make you money, we still get tree fitty, okay? As if that wasn't bad enough, the part that gets me really upset is that because people think crypto and Bitcoin is too complicated to do any research on, they'll also be missing out on any dividends from holding Bitcoin. Wait a minute, Andre, Bitcoin doesn't pay dividends, you idiot. Actually, it kind of does, because back in 2017, Bitcoin forked into two separate coins. There was Bitcoin BTC, the main chain we use and know today, and then there was Bitcoin Cash, BCH, and then subsequently other coins, which went on to become worth several hundred dollars. In fact, at one point or another, Bitcoin Cash was worth over $1,000 after the split. And even if you didn't believe in those coins and you didn't wanna invest or keep them, you could at least sell them, make some profit, and then reinvest that money, which is all a form of a special dividend that you no longer have access to if you own this note instead. The third reason I'm not a big fan is actually kind of hilarious because our Congress has told us that one of the reasons we don't have yet a crypto official ETF is because liquidity or a lack of liquidity is one of the problems. And ironically, this note has that listed in the paper as well. It says that this note may not be listed on any exchanges for you to buy, sell, and trade, which means if illiquidity is a bad thing, what is this trying to solve if it doesn't have liquidity either? Volatility? I'm not so sure, but either way, it's frustrating because their customers are gonna ask them, hey, do you have any Bitcoin crypto investments? And they're gonna be like, we have the perfect one for you. But ironically, it literally says this inside of the prospectus. It says, notwithstanding the name of the basket, the notes do not provide direct exposure to cryptocurrencies and the performance of the basket may not be correlated with the price of any particular cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin. Okay, then why is it called a basket of companies with exposure to cryptocurrency? You literally just said it doesn't have any direct exposure to crypto. Oh, it's indirect marketing. Well, in that case, I vote we rename it to something like a promise that cannot be bought or sold that will not pay you any dividends where you give up all shareholder rights and you pay us fees. How about that? I know, I'm super critical of this and I'm not saying you shouldn't buy it because I can't legally give you any financial advice, but blink really fast if something's wrong. If your parents or grandparents ever ask you about buying this investment and then potentially putting it into their retirement accounts, then just please show them this video and tell them that there's a far easier way to get access to the performance of cryptocurrencies without giving up their rights, without giving up the potential payments of dividends in the future, without giving up the freedoms of potentially buying and selling on a different marketplace, and while paying someone outrageous fees who doesn't even believe in the product in the first place. Having said all that, here's what I do like about it after having poo-pooed all over it, but Obviously the companies, they're not some random fly-by-night companies that JP Morgan picked, they're high quality. And it's a great thing that a big established bank like JP Morgan is trying to find a loophole around Congress to giving us a crypto-like ETF investment product, even though I don't think it's a particularly good one, at the very least, it's gonna get mom and dad excited about investing in this product, considering that it's probably too complicated to buy into for them right now, but I think it makes it easy this way. And it's gonna usher in a new generation of people that even though are gonna be a little bit older and less tech savvy, let's face it, they're the ones that have all the money because it's, it's not millennials. We broke. So at the very least, it will definitely help grow the value of Bitcoin and the overall crypto space, especially as more and more banks join to try to compete with JP Morgan's products. Unfortunately, older people right now are generally not the ones to be watching YouTube videos about how to set up the Ledger Nano and how to transfer from Gemini to BlockFi, how to 
earn interest and how to do all that stuff. So now when they go to the bank, because that's what they do to ask how to invest in crypto and Bitcoin, now banks like JP Morgan, and I'm sure other banks in the future will finally have an answer for them. And it's gone. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But the more banks we bring on, the more institutions, the more validity and credibility it gives the crypto space, which will hopefully someday can be leveraged to give us a real crypto slash Bitcoin ETF and not just a proxy for one. Don't forget to grab up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin using this BlockFi link right here, blockfi.com forward slash Andre, and get those two free stocks with Webull using the link down below by depositing $100. You'll get two free stocks, each of which can be valued up to $1,850. And once you get those stocks, make sure to start tracking them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.